So in a previous video on related rates, we learned the related rates was an application of the chain rule and we could use it to find the rate at which something was changing. In this video, we're going to go one step further and once we've found that rate, we're going to solve that differential equation. Now this first example, relatively straightforward. We find dy dt, so we know that dy dt is equal to dy dt. We find our third variable, which it looks like it's going to be uh, x, so dx, dx, and then we start subbing in what we know. Now in this example, we know that dx dt equals tan t, and we know that if y equals 3x, dy dx is going to be equal to 3. So we know that dy dt equals 3 tan t. And in the previous video, we essentially stopped there. We might have subbed a value in for t to find the rate at a specific time. But part b here says find the solution of the resulting differential equation. In other words, we just need to integrate dy dt. So we know that y is going to be equal to the integral of 3 tan t with respect to t. And you'd have to use some sort of substitution or something to integrate that. So with a u substitution, blah, 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 we'll get to an answer of negative 3 ln cos t plus c with these absolute values in the ln. Uh, you can take a look at that, but we have learnt this stuff before, so I'm not going to spend a bunch of time talking about u substitution. The important thing that you're supposed to be taking away from this is that once we have done our related rate, we can then solve for some variable, in this case, solve for y. So we can go that one step further. And they're not all gonna be that easy. This is a more complicated example. Uh, now we're looking for, construct an appropriate differential equation for dx dt. Now we know it's a related rates problem, so we're gonna end up with a dx here and a dt here. And then it's a little bit confusing as to what our other variable should be. Should it be h? Should it be r? If you read the question itself, you're given a flow rate. It's being filled, which is flowing from a tap at k litres per minute. So that's going to be our other variable. It's going to be volume, because we're being told volume with respect to time. Although there's a catch. Okay, let's look at dx dt, the units. X is in centimetres. And according to this flow rate, we're going to be working in minutes. So centimetres per minute. Now, dx is going to be centimetres, and the volume, I'm going to hold off on that, time is in minutes as well. And so now the question is, what am I going to do when it comes to volume here? Well, I could work in uh, litres here, but I think it's going to be far more straightforward if I work in centimetres cubed. Because if I work in centimetres cubed, any volume calculations don't have to pass through an extra layer when it comes to litres. So I'm going to put centimetres cubed as my volume unit. Okay, now what do I have? It says flowing from a tap at k litres per minute. If it's flowing at k litres per minute, this rate of change of volume with respect to time is going to be k litres per minute, but that's not the units I want to work in. I want to work in centimetres cubed per minute. There's a thousand centimetres cubed in a litre, so it's changing at a rate of 1,000 K. But it's being filled with water. Okay, uh, given that the initial curve is empty. All right, so the fill rate here, the rate at which the volume is changing is 1,000 K. Now we need to look at dx dv, which is going to be the more challenging part. Related rates questions with cones in them is like a whole genre of the question all by itself uh, because maths teachers love them. So let's take a look at this and it's going to involve similar triangles. First, we need to know that the volume of a cone, the formula for that. So for any cone, the volume is one third pi r squared times height. Now let's translate to this one here. So the volume of the water is going to be equal to one third pi, not r, because this length here is what we're calling 2r, so this length here is r. We're just going to need something new here, so let's put a new length in there for a new radius, and we'll just call it like um, 
Q. Okay, Q for that radius on the top of the blue water there. All right, so one third pi Q squared, and H isn't H because H is, is this length here. What we want is the height of the water, which is X. Okay, we're not too far away here because we can see that the volume and the depth of the water, V and X, are in this relationship. We're trying to find this, derivative of X with respect to V. The problem that we have is this Q sitting there. Luckily, like I said, this is a whole genre of question, and you tend to use similar triangles for this. So, draw a triangle through the middle here. And what we end up with is two similar triangles. One with height h and uh, width r, and one with height x and width q. And so we can say that the ratio of h to r is equal to x to q. The height to the radius is equal to the height to the radius. Standard simple triangle ratio stuff. Okay, so now we have a relationship between these four variables, h, r, x, and q. It feels bad because it feels like we're adding more variables, but we're not. When I rearrange this to make q the subject, q equals uh, x, r over h, I haven't added more variables. I've added more constants because r is a constant width. Right, H is a constant height. Q was a problem because Q is not a constant radius. It's a changing radius as the water goes down. So getting Q by itself here with X, which is a variable that we already had in our equation, so we're not adding a new variable by putting X there, and having R and H, these constants in place of Q is going to make our volume formula much more useful. So, putting xr over h in for q here is going to be great. Let's do it. All right, so we've got that, we've subbed that in. We can like tidy that up a little bit. So, uh, this is going to look a little bit strange here, but remember, pi r squared 3 h squared, all of that together is actually a number because we do know, we don't know the length of r, but we do know it's a constant. We don't know the length of h, but we do know it's a constant. So this r and this h are constants. This whole thing together is a number, x cubed. x is our variable here. All right, so we know that v equals that, which means that we now know dv dx. We know that dv dx, the derivative of v with respect to x, is going to be equal to, bring the 3 right out the front here. Remember, all of this is a number. So we get 3 times 3, those 3's cancel each other out. We end up with pi r squared over h squared x squared. So that's dv dx, but we don't want dv dx. We would like dx dv. So we need the reciprocal of that. So that means we now have exactly what we're looking for, and we can take dx dv and put it right here. All right, so putting it there and then simplifying it, we get dx dt equals 1000 kh squared over pi r squared x squared. And now we can integrate, we can solve that differential equation. Now solving that differential equation is something you should be already be able to do. First, by swapping the dt and the dx because the function is in terms of x and then integrating that. You'll find that a little bit easier to integrate if you hold in your head that pi r squared 1000 k h squared, that's all a constant. We'll write that a little bit differently. Now of course if that is all a constant, we can bring all of that constant outside of the integral, just like that. Now of course integrating x squared is incredibly easy. So we've divided by the 3, so instead of 1,000 now, we've got 3,000 and x cubed, and then this plus c here. Now we need to consider initial conditions. It says given that initially the cone was empty. So initially the cone was empty, so at time 0, um, the height was also 0. Uh, so 0 equals 0. So it also means that the c is equal to 0. So let t and x equals 0, 
therefore c is equal to zero. Don't be fooled, sometimes the c won't be zero, but if I put zero there and I put zero there, zero times all of that, which is a constant, is going to be zero. So c is also equal to zero. Therefore, my final answer is t equals pi r squared over 3000 kh squared x cubed. Now, I said it's my final solution, but it's not really my final solution because if we dive into our question, we've constructed an appropriate differential equation, dx dt, and solve it. When you solve a differential equation, you're solving it for the x bit, not the t bit. And so when we've written it as t equals this, we now need to rearrange it to make x the subject. That's the solution of a differential equation. And so my final solution is a rearrangement of this line here. x equals the cube root of 3000 kh squared t on pi r squared. Obviously there's a lot going on there. We've done our related rates. We've had to come up with some... Um, we had to do like a little bit of work here to come up with dx dv. We subbed it in and then from here we solved and then rearranged. So quite a bit going on. Uh, it's a tough one.